Hi guys, how are you all doing today? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for stopping by to watch today's video. My name is Sarah Wells and I'm a Prosecco based portrait photographer. And yeah, today's video I'm going to be talking about 5 portrait photography tips for a beginner. If this is the type of content you're interested in, keep watching. Okay guys, so this clips I'm going to share with you are just simple tips here and there that can help you in your portrait photography journey. I've been doing portrait photography for close to 10 years now and I know that these tips are things I still live by most of them till today. So tip number one, have a mood board. What I mean by mood board is um, just a list of images that will help your creative process. So you can come up with a mood board, your client can come up with a mood board, but both of you should have each other's um, have the vision, have work together as a team so you have a clear vision of where you're headed. So usually I'll get pictures from Pinterest, Google, Instagram, screenshots and then put them together in a folder and send it to my clients. Or the client can send the same to me. I just want to have an idea where your head is at for the shoot. So having a mood board is very important. It just helps the creative process and it just makes the job a lot easier. Tip number two, use long lenses. Use lenses like 85mm, 30mm, 50mm, 35mm is a bit wide. I will typically not go for that except if I want to do like something really creative. But if you're starting out and you just need a good lens, get a 50mm lens. Sorry, I keep saying that's fine. 50mm or an 85mm lens. Those lenses that are long can help you get proper portraits, not distorted images. The wide lenses may, might tend to distort your subject. And you can shoot portraits with wide lenses, but that's when you want to get creative and all of that. But the standard lenses for portrait photography are long lenses like the 85, the 50 mm, the 105. Those type of lenses help you get properly shaped images, images that are not distorted. So yeah, we could we, you, we should you should try to get those type of lenses instead of just buying lenses that you may not necessarily need. So you can just do it one 85 mm or one 50 mm. You you don't even necessarily have to have both of them. If it's if I use the 55 uh, with 50 mm lens for the longest until I got my 85 mm lens, and right now I can't remember unless I shot the 50 mm. I literally shoot almost all my portraits with 85 mm lens. So yeah, use the long lens. Tip number three: play music. It's as simple as that. During your sessions, even if you're doing an outdoor shoot or a studio shoot, just make sure there's soft music somewhere around. It doesn't necessarily even have to be soft. Some people like Nigab. Uh, go down low kind of songs you know songs that'll make them dance and then while they're dancing they're getting more relaxed and the entire shoes is becoming fun they don't see it as that big chore that they, they, they came with the mindset that it will be you know so the music goes a whole the music goes a long way you guys so it just makes the process a lot smoother a lot easier and if we you as a photographer while you're dancing to the music you won't even know that oh I've done this for 30 minutes, my clients are enjoying themselves, I'm enjoying myself, we're just dancing now, we're just having fun basically. So you can't do without a music box. Get a small music box, it could be a Bluetooth speaker or something, just anything that can play music and will um, aid you to enjoy the session. So get a music box if you haven't got someone. Tip number four, right? Work with a color scheme. So if your client tells you they're wearing a white outfit, think about colors that complement white. white. Work with colors that complement each other. If you don't know much about colors, you can start reading up on colors. Look for colors that complement the color your client is wearing, your, the color of outfits your client is wearing. So most times, if I know that I'm gonna use like a brown, a brown um, outfit, I will know that if I want to shoot it against a brown backdrop or a cream backdrop. They're just colors that complement each other. So you don't go completely off. You can't just bring a, a um, like a, the purple outfit and place it on a brown, but it just, it won't be pleasing to the eyes. So most of the reasons why you like some images is because the colors are coordinated and it's pleasing to the eye. So even if you're not shooting in the studio, you're shooting outdoor, you're shooting in, in a garden, their colors are complements with green. So you're shooting with the green, you have a green, um, you know, green outdoor space. And then you ask for your quiet outfit, so you can say, okay, let me shoot with a red, red and green goes perfectly. So look for colors that complement just make sure you're, you're, you're coordinating the colors, both the backdrop, the background, wherever it is you're shooting, your colors should complement each other. It tends to make your portraits more pleasing to the eye. So have that at the back of your mind when you're shooting. Pick colors that complement each other. You may not have control of what color your clients would wear, but you have control of where you should shoot that color against. So have that at the back of your mind 
that you don't just tell them to stand here just because you want them to stand there. Look at the background, are the colors complementing? Is there an element of, if the client is wearing a blue dress and you want to shoot against the sky that's blue, you want to complement the sky, you know, just look through and make sure that your, your colors are complementing in one way or the other. It tends to make your image more soothing, just makes it more pleasing to the eyes when you pay attention to those details. I hope that makes sense. Tip number five, pay attention to lighting. So a lot of photographers tend to worry so much about lighting. Like they, they just feel like lighting is this big deal. I don't, I don't personally think lighting is a big deal. We just overthink these things sometimes. You just want to use the biggest strobes, you want to use the, the different modifiers. This is, you, you don't have to overthink it. Sometimes you just need a large window source to get stunning images. So experiment when you're starting out. Don't just put yourself in the box that, oh, I have to shoot with strobes because that's what every portrait photographer shoots with. You don't necessarily have to shoot with strobes. A lot of people create amazing images with just natural light. Try to train your eyes to see. Train your eyes to see light. If you can see light, you can create anything with light. So you come into a space, you try and look around. Where's the main light source? Where can I put my subject? That when my, where will my subject be illuminated? And think of how to create images with the light source around you. Don't put yourself in a box. I feel like a lot of times, a lot of portrait photographers are just stuck doing one thing. I think I'm even there because I tend to shoot almost the same thing over and over again. The strobe lights, and then sometimes you don't even get to see lights. You know, you come into a space, you're not trying to see more because you're just used to shooting with your strobes. You can control the strobes. So, but the, the mo most important thing is to understand how light works. Even if you're using natural light or your strobe or whatever source of light you're using, just understand the dynamics of lighting and you get awesome images. I mean, you guys, not that difficult. If you practice all the time, just keep training your eyes, practice. You don't have to wait till you have a client to shoot. Pick up your cousin, pick up your brother, pick up anybody. I want to take pictures with you. Train, use your phones to start training your eyes, even if you don't have a camera yet. So lighting is very, very important. Now, this is the final point. I think I've done five already, so let me just do a last bonus point. Pay attention to cat lights. Cat lights are those lights you see in the eyes of your portrait. The eyes of a portrait is more like the soul of that image. There are some photos you see that you're just drawn to. A lot of times, the eyes is what draws you to that photograph. So when you're shooting, try to see that in the studio, a lot of times that happens because they are um, external light and it, you get the cat lights in your image. But sometimes when you're shooting anywhere else, you may not have that at the back of your mind. So as you're shooting, try to make sure that you're getting cat lights in the eyes of your subject. Try to posi your, position your subject in such a way that the light is reflecting in his or her eyes. That way you create images that people are drawn to, images that have soul, images that people just look at and they're like, wow, there's something about this image. A lot of times the eyes is one of those factors that make those images outstanding. So cat lights are very important for portrait photography. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this so far. I hope with these three points of mine, I haven't confused you guys. These are just simple tips that can help you improve your portrait photography, um, your portrait photographs as a new, um, as a beginner photographer. I hope I haven't confused you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. There's so many whole lots in me. I like this video, give it a thumbs up, share, and all the good stuff. Thank you so much. I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.